British Royal Navy soon found itself desperately trying to get rid of its Zeppelin problem over the North Sea. The massive German airships had slowly begun to exert command over vitally important sea routes, using their aerial advantage to spy on Royal Navy movements and to even attempt dropping bombs on several British ships. Although slow and cumbersome to maneuver, the Zeppelins could fly above the reach of most ship fire. To effectively strike back, the British Royal Navy realized that their best chance to down the Zeppelins was to hit them before they even took off. The only problem was that Britain had no way of reaching the German Zeppelin base in Turner, Denmark. And so a most audacious plan was formed, one that had never been attempted before. After a false start with Operation F.6, Britain launched Operation F.7, the first offensive aircraft carrier strike. The mission called for a group of Sopwith Camel bombers to take off from the battlecruiser HMS Furious, converted to be an aircraft carrier. It would be an historic achievement, and an idea so new that the carrier squadron had no workable way to land. In 1917, at the peak of World War I, the British Royal Navy knew that because the German High Seas Fleet had been effectively blockaded in port, the most significant naval intelligence threat came from Germany's Zeppelins. German airships had been supplying a slow but steady feed of information on British ship movements to waiting German U-boats. As the Zeppelins often flew high out of reach, Britain's best hope was to try to strike them before they could get off the ground. The only obstacle to this thinking was the technology available at the time. Bomber planes launched from Britain could not reach German airfields in continental Europe. British aircraft would need to depart from offshore from base spring. Captain Horst Freiherr Teutsch von Butler Brandelfels attacked the seaplane tenders of the Royal Navy from his airborne Zeppelin. Although he scored no hits, he did note that, quote, the flying boats the English had did not attack our airships because the latter could always outclimb them. Trona Base. The following year, the Germans built two sheds to house their Zeppelins at Trona, Denmark, intending to keep them safe while they patrolled the North Sea. The sheds were named Tobias and Tony. At the Tschöner base, Germany kept barracks for 600 soldiers, hangars for five defense albatross fighters, and storage for 20,000 liters of fuel. They also produced hydrogen for the Zeppelins on site. While the British knew about the base, they couldn't do much about it at the time. The Royal Navy knew only a plane would be able to bypass the Heligoland Bight since the bay was packed with mines and U-boats. The two attempts they made using float planes revealed that they were inefficient for fighting and bombing, even if they could operate off the open water. While the British struggled with finding a way to destroy the base, the Germans continued to enhance their presence. Cherna was upgraded with a third shed, 730 feet long by 220 feet wide and 130 feet high, that could simultaneously house two Zeppelins. They named it Tosca. The HMS Furious the Royal Navy realized that the only thing that could grant them victory over the Zeppelins was to launch a different kind of fighter fleet from the sea. British naval planners knew that warships had the sufficient speed and range that early fighter aircraft lacked. They would have to come up with a way in which their strengths could overlap. The Royal Navy decided to modify the half-completed light battlecruiser HMS Furious to turn it into an aircraft carrier. A flight deck was installed forward on the main superstructure. It was equipped with Sopwith Camel 2F.1A, a naval variant of the British biplane fighter aircraft. Remining while an attack was planned. On August the 2nd, the squadron commander, Edwin Harris Dunning, was flying his fighter Sopwith Pup, a predecessor to the Sopwith Camel, when he sideslipped the aircraft over the deck, almost hovering, and completed the first aircraft landing on a moving ship. Although his second attempt was not as successful, since the Sopwith Pup bounced off the deck and sank in the water. To remedy the situation, towards the end of 1917, they added a second flight deck, which would unfortunately prove hazardous, if not deadly, to land on. The center line was losing a torpedo. In March 1918, the converted battlecruiser was sent to scop a flow with the Grand Fleet. The commander, Rear Admiral Fillimore, allegedly received encouragement from the Royal Air Force to attack the Imperial German Navy Naval Airship Division bases. Operation F.6 the initial plan was to use Sopwith one and a half strutters for an attack. Still, these aircraft were deemed too valuable to lose in combat due to their reconnaissance capabilities, light cruiser squadron, and eight destroyers taken from the 13th flotilla. 
They reached the target site on June 29th, but were unable to carry out the operation. Strong Force 6 winds on the Beaufort scale made flying too risky and sent them back to port. The Trenner Raid The next attempt saw the mission rebranded as Operation F.7. HMS Furious was sent to sea at 12.03 on July 17, 1918, escorted by Force B. It combined the 1st Battle Squadron Division's new Revenge-class warship with members of the 7th Light Cruise Squadron and a destroyer escort. The HMS Resolution had its turret guns loaded with special shrapnel ammunition meant to hit and rip apart the Zeppelins. The combined armada would be the world's first carrier task force. At midnight, the HMS Furious traveled as close as it could to the Danish coast. At around 3 o'clock on the morning of July 18th, the aircraft carrier was ready to launch the stop with camels. Yet it could not start the attack due to another storm. Instead of retreating all the way back to port, Force B decided to delay the mission 24 hours. In the meantime, they sailed the ship back and forth while protected by its companions and out of sight from land. When the weather cleared, the HMS Furious traveled towards the coast once again. The main goal was to eliminate the Zeppelins. However, the Tobias Shed only held an outdated dirigible balloon, and the Tony Shed had been dismantled. Tosca was still standing, and housed the L-54 Zeppelin and the brand new L-60. Each Zeppelin had over a million cubic feet of hydrogen and several bombs ready for attack. Notwithstanding, before reaching the base, Captain Tyne had to return due to an engine failure that forced him to ditch his aircraft and be rescued from the water. The first wave of Sopwith camels arrived over the German base at 4.35, completely surprising the enemy. The British pilots went for Tosca, hitting it with three bombs that detonated two Zeppelin's hydrogen gas bags. Although the airships did not explode and the shed was not destroyed, they did catch on fire. During the first wave attack, the Tobias shed was also hit, damaging the balloon housed inside. The second attack wave easily located the airfield thanks to the enormous column of smoke and managed to destroy the balloon setting it ablaze. While the British raided Cherna, the Germans attempted to muster an anti-aircraft defense with rifle fire. Only one sop with camel from the second wave endured any damage, losing an undercarriage wheel. Pilots Williams, Jackson, and Dawson all landed in Denmark under the mistaken belief that they did not have enough fuel to return to the British carrier. The other three pilots went in search of the offshore Force B. Dixon crashed at sea, but managed to make it aboard the HMS Violent. Smart struggled with engine trouble, but arrived soon after to successfully ditch and have his aircraft be the only one recovered. Unfortunately, Hewlett was lost on his way back, and was never heard from again. The pilots that landed in Denmark soon reunited with the Royal Navy Squadron, and they all went back to port together. The German Response The Germans swiftly repaired the double hangar Tosca shed. Nonetheless, Cherna base was left mostly in disrepair, seeing no further use as only an emergency landing site. Immediately after the British raid, the Germans increased their anti-aircraft defenses at all of their remaining bases. The defeat also led the Germans to reassess that their other North Sea airbase in Nordholz, Germany, was too vulnerable to maintain. It was lit on fire to prevent future attacks from British aircraft carriers. Yet although the British continued their bombing raids throughout the war, no other raids involved carriers. <laughs>